I'm Josh. And I'm Billy. And today we're talking the Tomorrow War. Yeah, we are, guys. Welcome to the Gee Dunk. So, Tomorrow War, is this the kind of movie that's worth watching today? We'll stick around because we're about to find out. All right, the Tomorrow War is available on Amazon Prime for no additional cost outside the subscription. Billy, who's in this movie? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's free on Amazon Prime. We got uh, J.K. Simmons, we got Chris Pratt, and we got uh, Sam Richardson. And he was in uh, Werewolves Within. Yeah, yeah, we just watched Werewolves Within. He was in that, did a pretty good job in that, and I thought he did okay in this. So this is a pretty big week for him, two movies. Yeah, it. yeah, it definitely is, man. A guy, you know, he's, you know, we're starting to see him in other stuff too, right? So I think he's, uh, you know, he started out as a comedian, and now he's doing pretty good in his acting career. So Probably a little you know, bit better in Werewolves Within than in this movie, though. Yeah, well, well, he had the pr- the lead role in Werewolves Within, right? With well, this one, he really doesn't. I mean, he's more of a secondary character in this one. I mean, he's still got a lot of, you see him a lot in this in this, in this this movie, but definitely not the lead role like he was in Werewolves Within, whereas Chris Pratt's the lead in this, obviously. But uh, all right, so this movie starts out in December 2022. They're uh, you know starts out kind of uh, they're having a party at Chris Pratt's house, and uh, the funny thing is, uh, I guess most of you guys need to start picking a favorite soccer team because evidently the big sport now is soccer. They're having this huge soccer watching party at the house. Uh, you know, Chris Pratt's there with his wife and daughter, and uh, well, I think they chose soccer because soccer is more of a world sport than like football, American football, or something like that. So they probably wanted something, because this isn't just the United States issue. This is a worldwide issue. Right, right. And, and, and especially when it plays into what happens in a minute. Yeah, I mean, that, that makes total sense. But uh, either way, you might want to, you know, a year from now, soccer is everything going to be huge here in the U.S. So you might want to pick a favorite <laughs> team. But, but uh, um, so, uh, you know, Chris Pratt starts out, he's on the, you know, and the guy's got a good life, right? I mean, you know, I mean, it shows him, uh, you know, he's a former Army Special Forces guy. Uh, but Well, and that part's weird, too, because... As he's in his house and they're watching soccer, you see a shadow box on the wall that shows he was a first sergeant uh, and has all his medals and and things like that on it. And this is kind of odd because they mention he did two tours in Iraq and that he knew the army wasn't he wasn't going to make a career out of it. But if you're a first sergeant, you've been in over 15 years. Right. And you've probably done more than two tours right, at right, this right, time exactly. of day. Yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah, first eating, I mean, we've you know. done like two tours and uh, we weren't in as long as... To make it to first sergeant, right? And we both made it to staff sergeant in the Marine Corps. E six, you know, and uh, and some people have done seven, eight. And if you're with special I mean, forces, yeah. they usually do longer time over there, but more frequently. So right, exactly. But uh, yeah, you know, and you know, first sergeant's E eight, right? There's only one step above that, so you ain't picking that crap yeah. up. In, eight in years. his shadow box, they show a silver star, uh, a purple right. heart. It looked like someone went to a, a military surplus <laughs> store and just like took every like metal or ribbon that they had. Right, in right. There. Let's, throw, so, let's just make this box look cool. Throw all this crap in me. there, right? <laughs> this guy's a badass. So. Yeah, but I mean, but they did that obviously to show you know you know later on in the movie you know you know why he's kind of chosen to be the squad lead because he's got the experience and you know most other people don't have military experience the way he does yeah the other odd thing is later on in the movie they're like oh you were in the military and he's like well about 15 years ago which is also yeah. odd because if you were a first sergeant 15 years ago and maybe they're just refer he's just referring to a special forces time i don't think so but no. possibly so maybe that could make sense. But if he was in the military 15 years ago, then all this isn't really adding up. Right, because well. he's like in his early 40s right here. So, yeah, I mean, it, it wouldn't make sense at all. And they don't explain any of that. And at the end of the day, I guess it really didn't need to. It, just, it was just it was just an oversight on their part. And and one of many oversights, I think, that we saw in this movie, right? So, you know, and most and the thing is most people who aren't in the military wouldn't catch that anyway, right? You yeah. and I, Codex, we were in. And, you know, you know those of you who, are, who have served, you'll catch it. But most other just people aren't going to catch now. it. Yeah. But uh, so, you know, anyway, December 2022, you know, this uh, huge soccer match is going on on TV. They're all watching, you know, Chris Pratt, again, as I was saying, he's got a good life. You know, he's got a, you know, beautiful wife and kid. You know, things are going well for him. He's a high school, uh, like bi- biology teacher, science teacher. Uh, but he's on the phone because he feels that his life deserves more, right? He wants to be more than just a high school teacher. You know, he wants to do lab work, work for a big corporation. So he's on the phone with some big companies, some big wigs and uh, interviewing with them. And he, th- he's, he thinks he's got this job nailed down. And uh, evidently he didn't. They pick somebody else, and he gets super bummed out. Comes inside in a pissy mood. You know, sits down with his wife and kid, and his daughter's trying to cheer him up. And uh, you know, and then uh, all of a sudden, you know, during a soccer match, this portal opens up, and all of these futuristic soldiers, uh, you know, appear. Yeah, this seems a little odd because he's really down. He acts like he just. I mean, he still has a job as a teacher for high school. So, right. and, and there's even remarks like later on, like. 
me and mom believed him when no one else did. It's like, geez, he's, right. he's a teacher. Right. I mean, right. come on. Right. A guy who's just got a good job, right? You get a pension and all that. <laughs> from that. So you know, he didn't have a horrible life. You know, they had a nice house, you know, it was like, come on, man, you're leaving me bad. Yeah, so you know, kind of weird yeah. how they tried to stretch right. that out. Right. But uh, so, uh, you know, so they're watching the game. All of a sudden this giant portal opens right in the middle of the soccer field. And all these futuristic soldiers come in, and then it's like an Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam poster. You know the you know world. We need you. We you know, need you. You know there's a big war going on 30 years from now, and we need every man on deck to defeat these aliens because there's only 500,000 of us left in the whole wide world because humanity's been almost wiped yeah. out. I mean, right in the middle of the soccer match, some guy is making a breakaway. He's going to the goal, and then a portal opens, and boom, these soldiers come out of there. Right. Exactly. So, you know, we see this happen, of course, you know, it's a real dramatic moment. Like, everybody's like, oh, is this real? What's going on here? You know, we can't believe it. And, you know, come to find out it is real. And the United States and, well, not just the United States, but the whole world Yeah, what are they saying? Like, 30 years from now, yeah. we're under attack. And, yeah. and then, the so, human race is going to be wiped out. Yeah, like I said, there's about 500,000 people left in the future of the human race, of the 7 billion that there were, because these aliens spread and just started wiping everybody out so quickly. So, kind of, kind of a quiet place kind of scenario, right? So... Then, you know, they start a draft program, the whole world does. And uh and and Chris Pratt and uh his and Sam Richardson are both, you know, well Sam Richardson is like a, a big time R and D guy, right? He's like the VP for some company, their R and D company. So he's he's also a scientist as well. So they're both like sitting there so they both get drafted a year later. I got drafted. After this goes down, and they're sitting there talking and they kinda come up with this idea that, hey, uh, you know, why did you get drafted? And he's like, why well, did I die, you know, in, you know, within the next couple of years? And he's like, yeah, me too. So they kind of figure out, hey, they're drafting everybody who's going to die before the war happens. You know, so, and then they realize, hey, why are all of our instructors young? You know, why are all these kids in here instructing us like in their 20s? And they realize, oh, because they weren't born yet. So they kind of say that there's like this time paradox where you can't come in contact with your own self or it might throw off the timeline, so they kind of explain it that way. And at least that's their theory. They never yeah, say they never it. confirm that. Right. These guys are just kind of opining this, and it seems to make sense. Right, exactly. So it kind of makes sense. And it's cool how they did that. You know, it's cool how they played that out. So okay, you know, it kind of makes sense how that would work. You know, you don't want to you know come across yourself in the timeline. So you know, whatever. But uh, you know, again, so you know, after after that event happens, a year later, Chris Pine gets drafted, or Chris Pine, <laughs> <laughs> Chris Pratt, Chris Pratt gets drafted. And uh, so does Sam Richardson, you know, so they go to training camp, right? So it's supposed to be, and well, number one, it's only supposed to be a week-long training, which is nuts, you know, and so they're there, and there really wasn't much training happening. I mean, you see them starting to learn how to use weapons, and that's really all they show you. Like, even the instructor's like, there's going to be no obstacle courses, no running, no push-ups, no nothing, you know, it's a week long, and then we're going to send you out into battle against these friggin' monsters that are supposedly just terrorizing and killing everybody, right? Yeah, so. which is odd, because they skip forward, and... Uh Sam Richardson's character doesn't even know how to put the magazine into <laughs> right. the rifle correctly, so. Oh, here, buddy. Take that. You just look around like that. Yeah. Are you so calm? Long story. Are you ex military? Yeah. Kind of a short story, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Chris Pratt has a show how to do it. Well, and then the funniest part about this now is so they're there for maybe two days, and then the red alarm goes off, right? It's like, red alert, red alert, you know, and they're like, whoa, whoa, what's going on? So you're supposed to have a week training. Like, hey, training's cut short. You know, there's bad events happening, and it's going to wipe the human race out, and so we need you now. So, like, literally, like, after two days of training, barely learn how to use their rifles, they get, you know, taken up into this, you know, into the time portal or whatever. Which is pretty cool because they're just kind of sitting there. They're all prepping. They're all nervous, and it just sucks you right yeah. up and teleports you, which is kind of cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool seeing how they did that. And then, uh, you know, and then, of course, you know, it's fast forwards to them actually coming down. Well, they as they're teleporting, they say, hey, there's some kind of air. They're yeah. not dropping in the right spot because they're only they're supposed to be dropping in the beach in Miami yeah, or Miami something beach. like that. Five to ten feet off the ground. But these guys are like falling out of the sky. Yeah, they're like hundreds of feet above the ground. So, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, it, it shows them teleporting. And then all of a sudden, Chris Pratt's like in the air like, whoa. <laughs> you know, he's looking down like, oh, man. like he's Which jumped. is pretty cool. Yeah. But the, the issue I have with that is it looks like they're falling at terminal velocity. And Chris yeah, Pratt. No He's like steering toward the pool and he lands in the pool. And I'm like, if you hit water going that fast, yeah. it's like hitting concrete. Well, and, so. well and, and not only that, but I mean, you're talking about a six foot pool. So, you know, that's six foot of water ain't going to save you from the falling that far, even if it wouldn't been like hitting concrete, which water would be like that. Yeah. And it is kind of a cool scene though, because people are hitting the side of buildings and just splatting on the ground, oh, yeah. which is producing a mass casualty event like right off the bat. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they, I mean, there was probably about 200 people in that class and maybe 20 or 30 of them survived that drop because most of them, you know, like Josh just said, don't hit the swimming pool and are falling to their desks, like hitting the sides of buildings or just hitting the ground, you know, at the, at the bottom and all that. So it was, you know, it was a pretty cool, wild scene. 
But, uh, you know, and then the funny thing is, you know, they had two days of training, yet, I mean, Chris Pratt, you know, the the commander in charge, you know, starts, you know, radioing in, hey, can you guys hear me? And Chris Pratt's like, yep, got it. And she was like, and she's flipping through his chart and saying, oh, okay, cool. It shows you were a soldier, you know, and you were, uh, you were special forces good. So, you know, you take the lead, take charge, and uh, we need you to go to this objective and we need you to secure these people for us, right? Combat so that, search and rescue yep, mission. Yep, you have a CSAR mission, exactly. So they've got to go secure this objective, hopefully find the people that are there, and and uh, and rescue them from these monsters. Well, so they're like, okay, let's do it. So they're leaving the building, and then all, it's like all of a sudden now they're all perfect and awesome at doing squad formations, right? Like, and mind <laughs> you, these are... 40 plus year old hey, nurses, stay at home moms right. and everything nurses, else. Nurses, garbage men, you know, right. Yeah, right. Exactly. So, you know, but yet all of a sudden now they're all like, after two days of training, they're all doing squad formations and you got guys in the front, guys in the rear, guys in the sides that are, you know, covering everybody six and looking around. And so that made no sense whatsoever, right? These guys, none of these and guys this are is trained. a complicated movement. Oh, yeah. Like oh, yeah. Absolutely. Because this is urban environment. Right. Yeah, exactly. We're talking urban warfare here. And so, I mean, that was just, it was ridiculous how they played that out. And then, uh, but, you know, again, it's, you know, it's, they did it for the movie purpose and, and people who weren't in the military wouldn't catch that anyway. Right. Yeah. But, and, and that brings me to other issues. They hit this science lab and you can look at Chris Pratt's character and he has a gun belt on and he is firing on full automatic with his rifle and he's only got two spare mags on his gun belt. Right. So it's, you go through, when you're shooting a full auto, you go through a magazine in probably about three seconds. And there's even a scene where they're, sh- all of them like see a monster and they're all shooting up in the stairwell and none of them like reload. You would probably want to reload even if you weren't out of rounds there just so you could have a fresh mag. Right, exactly. So, I mean, that well, really bothers me in movies and they normally always do it. I don't know why they're firing on full auto. Yeah, because <laughs> it makes for a cool movie. Yeah. I guess, but they're rarely doing any magazine changes right, no, in, yeah. in this. Oh, and I was no, waiting yeah, no. to kind of see that, especially since they're supposed to be um, rather junior at doing this, and yeah. they rarely show scenes with them reloading. Right, well, then, and then that, that comes into another inconsistency, right? So apparently, you know, so they tell these guys right off the bat, hey, when you're fighting these monsters, you know, and they call them uh, uh, white spikes, and the reason they call them white spikes is because they have these tentacles that shoot out spikes at you. And... Uh, so when you're fighting them, aim for the neck or aim for the abdomen because that's their two weak spots, right? Everything else is pretty much uh, tough and you can't hurt it. So aim for these two weak spots. Yet, you know, and, and when plus they're using 5.56 rounds is what it looks like. And, you know, which, you know, if you're fighting something like this, you want at least 7.62 or higher, right? You want, you want a bigger, you know, bigger, you know, you know, you want bigger rounds. Yeah, these this. guys just come into this fight with rifles and pistols right. and there's no, like, thermobaric grenades or anything. No, um... No. Shoulder fired weapons, not even heavy machine guns or nothing like that to fight these things. Even though they have these weak points, it's not like they're bulletproof elsewhere. They still are taking hits and explosives seem to be very effective on them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because well, there's scenes where they're, you know, they got these jets that come in, drop these 500 pound bombs, and the bombs explode and they take these things out really well. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, which leads to kind of another thing. Well, so back to the, back to, the, you know, them firing on these things. They're shooting at them and it's very, very much, very much like Starship Troopers, right? I mean, it's just like when they're shooting at the bugs and Starship Troopers and they're dropping just tons of rounds into them and these things ain't falling. And, and finally, after enough rounds getting into them, they'll, you know, they'll finally drop and die. But, uh, you know, they said that the only vulnerable spots are the neck and the abdomen. Yeah, they're blowing these things' limbs off. You know, you see limbs coming off of them. You know, you see the shots going into their head. You see them bleed and stuff. So it's like, that's the only vulnerable spot. You know, what, you know what's going on here? Yeah, I guess they're just saying it's the only critical spot that'll take them down quickly. Yeah. But, uh... you know, and then, you know, and then, of course... Again, if you know that's the case, you know, and you know that certain, you know, bombs work on them, why aren't you using armor piercing rounds, right? Why aren't you using completely armor piercing rounds, larger caliber rounds, you know, because there's scenes where they're going, where they're driving Humvees through and they're taking, and they've got, uh, you know, they've got 50 cows on top of the Humvee and they're mowing these things down with these 50 cows, right? Yeah, so, they don't show any military armor in this because if you were to bring a tank in yeah. this, they haven't shown anything from these monsters that would lead me to think that they could take a tank out. No. Nah. They, they have jaws and sharp teeth, but it doesn't make me think it would cut through armor. No, definitely not. And then even their spikes that they shoot out, when they hit the wall, you can still see it. And when they hit people, it's not even penetrating to them. So you can't even say, like, that would penetrate any kind of armor right. or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, it shouldn't penetrate body armor because when it hits the people, it's still sticking half out of them, right? So no, yeah, exactly. So it wouldn't penetrate you know, any kind of body armor. And it's sticking into freaking sheetrock, right? <laughs> the, right. The so I would think you know, if, so. if some military armor came on the scene, they could shoot through these guys pretty good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, none of that's explained. And again, you know, if you're not, you weren't in the military or aren't at least a military buff, then you wouldn't really catch it anyway. 
You know, and it just, you know, of course, it just all, it all and makes for good And that didn't hold the movie back too no, much no, for no, me. No, no. These are just things that we've noticed and right, exactly. stand out to us. But, uh, you know, but the movie does, you know, there, there was some good, there was a good amount of aspects to the movie. So when we came into this movie, you know, we talked about it in one of our weekly reviews. I was not excited about this movie. You know, I thought the trailers looked, you know, the first couple of trailers looked okay. But then once it showed you what these monsters looked like, I'm like, oh, these look like some knockoffs from A Quiet Place. You know, and, uh, you know, I just wasn't excited about it. But the movie surprised me, and it definitely uh, definitely went along a lot better than I thought it would. So I went into it with low expectations and ended up coming out pleasantly surprised to an extent. Right? Yeah, this movie reminded me a lot of if, like, a prequel to The Quiet Place if the military was fighting the aliens in a quiet place. Yeah. I mean, these things aren't quite as high speed as those where those were bulletproof and had claws that could rip through almost anything, would it appear. So they're not right. like that, but they look kind of similar, and they move kind of similar so it has a similar yeah, fast vibe like to it. yeah 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 and uh no and, and that's a good point yeah it's kind of like the, this is kind of like a quiet place prequel where you know where the world's getting taken out by these scenes because in the quiet place the world got taken out quick right i mean right. you know humankind got dwindled down you know pretty quick in a quiet place just like this and uh, and neither one of them do you get an explanation of why you know like why couldn't we take these things out you know but uh so that's, that's a really good point uh, so it's definitely got that kind of feel to it. You know, it absolutely has a Starship Trooper feel to it. You know, it's got a, uh, you know, it's got a little bit of a, of an Independence Day feel, t- you know, feel to it. Battlefield LA, this reminds yeah. me a lot of Battlefield LA as they're actually in the city fighting these things. Yeah, so it's, it's like they took a bunch of movies, you know, a bunch of good monster alien movies, kind of merged them all together in this one and, and said, hey, you know, let's see what we can do with all this into one movie and, and kind of make it work. And, and it did to an extent. It worked pretty well. I mean, the acting, especially Chris Pratt and J.K. Simmons, phenomenal. I mean... You know, J.K. Simmons was only in this movie, you know, really, I mean, he was in it some in the beginning, but really he didn't come into play until probably about the last 40 minutes of the movie. And that guy, I mean, that guy can act, you know, I mean, and, and that 40 minutes was a very good 40 minutes because he was in it. You know, I was like, man, I, I love, wish love he seeing was that in guy. more of it. Oh, yeah, they totally should have had him in more of it because, I mean, J.K. Simmons is a phenomenal actor. I mean, that guy could play any role, and you definitely saw it in this movie in that last 40 minutes of the movie. Which, by the way, is uh, that's one thing. This is a long movie. It's two hours and twenty minutes. Way too long. Way too long. They could have cut it down to about an hour and forty five minutes, and it and honestly would have made it a better movie. I mean, at it's... one point, I looked at how much time was left, and it looked like they were about to wrap it up, and there was like forty more minutes yep. left. And oh, you yeah. think it's like, oh, they're they're close to the end. Nope. No, no, it's still <laughs> yeah, exactly. Still a ton of time left. You know, and uh, and the one and and then, and then of course there's other inconsistencies. So in the beginning, you know, the Secretary of Defense. When he's talking to the new recruits, gives them this Independence Day kind of speech, like uh, "You're not fighting for the United States; you're fighting for the world." You know, so be proud. Seven days from now, when you're sent into that war, you won't be fighting for your country; you'll be fighting for the world. And then it says, you know, and then even on the news, it's like, "Hey, this is the first time in history that the whole world's come together and united against a single enemy, and like we're all, you know, kumbaya, happy together now." But then all of a sudden, later in the movie, when they finally find a way that could potentially save the world. You know, the uh, sec desk like, oh, wait, you know, because they, you know, wh- where the where they needed to go was in another country, was in Russia. And the sec desk like, we can't just infiltrate a foreign hostile country just on a hunch and this and that. It's like foreign hostile country. You, earlier in the movie, you just told us that everybody's kumbaya mm-hmm. and the whole world's getting along together. And now it's kind of you know, ridiculous because you instituted a draft where you're drafting 50-year-old women into this. So clearly it's right. important enough to, to get those people you know, in this, that it's pretty high level. And then when someone brings you a solution, you're like, no. Oh yeah, no, exactly. So it didn't really make any sense whatsoever. No. And if you think about it, the only reason why they did this was to bring his dad back right. in the fold. It was right. a lazy excuse to, to bring, bring his dad back into the fold. Because he's like, how are we going to infiltrate this country, you know, covertly? Who could do such a thing and not... Right. Beyond and, and, the government's radar. Yeah. So J.K. Simmons plays Chris Pratt's dad, and he's a former uh, Vietnam vet, and he's kind of uh, does some shady kind of stuff, you know, for, as his current occupation. Boy, they say kids never come by unless they need something. I need your help. I'll get my coat. So, uh, yeah, so that's, and that's exactly why they did it, to bring him into the fold and say, okay, cool, we'll use him now for the rest of the movie, and we'll make it good. But, uh, again, it just made it for a crap section of the movie because it was just ridiculous. You know, it, it was just very messy, very... You know, they just did not do a good job of it at all because there's no way on earth that would happen that way. And yeah. uh, so, you know, and they made like make the sick death look like this is just a complete douche. And it just what, you know, it just it was it was just dumb. You know, it was a dumb part of the movie. Yeah. The other issue kind of with this movie is it's a pretty decent action movie, but it doesn't really do anything that you haven't seen done before. 
And yeah. it doesn't do it as good as some of those other movies on top of it. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, like I said earlier, this movie is totally, as far as the action goes, totally reminiscent of Starship Troopers, right? I mean, I mean, you could watch both movies side by side and it'd be very, very similar, right? And then even... Except not as good. Yeah, except not as good as Starship Troopers. And even the bug scene, you know, you know, Zim got the bug, man. There's like, you know, there's kind of a, that, that feel to it too with this because there's a certain monster, bug, whatever that they need to capture in this one as well. And, and it's very similar, even how they go about capturing it, right? I mean, it's, you know. Yeah, and so, even the suspense elements in this movie aren't as good as, say, The Quiet Place. No. So it's trying to do a lot of things. A lot of movies are doing just not as well. But yeah. it's not entirely that bad either. No, no, it wasn't that bad. But, there's yeah, there's definitely, there, there's scenes that they would try to make kind of scary. But the thing is, you saw it coming, right? There's no scene in this where you're going to get, there's jump scares. There's no... There's no scary feel to it at all. Even in scenes where you think they were trying to make it scary feel, it just doesn't feel scary. You saw it coming, and so it definitely didn't do a very good I mean, job they of that. they should have that aliens like, feel where right, they're exactly. all out there, and then you, they're looking at the tracker, and it's like boop, 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 yep. boop, and like moving in on them. There's nothing right. really like well, to build that tension. Right, well, then speaking of aliens, then they threw like a scene from aliens <laughs> in this, right? Trying, so then they're on, you know, they're, yeah, so they're, there's a part of this movie that's very alien feeling, right? You know, you got uh, Ripley fighting off the queen and the, and the ship and all that, and there's a, you know, there's, there's very an alien feel to this in a certain part of the movie as well and we're not giving any spoilers kind of let you know what happens but but so yes yeah, so it's like they took a ton of different movies you know you know scenes and, and different stuff from different movies and kind of threw it into this and and, and again it's not a horrible movie and, and i was very i was i was pleasantly surprised the way it turned out compared to what i was thinking it was going to be because i i honestly went into this almost not wanting to watch it yeah i really you know? think your expectations going into this are going to determine how well you like it. if you yeah. have very high expectations you'll probably be disappointed but if you have low expectations which we both did we were right. pleasantly surprised right. with it so exactly you know and, and then there's other scenes too like you know these things are so deadly you know they're ripping people to pieces and yet there's a scene where chris pratt's playing freaking uh you know rocky balboa against <laughs> one of the against one of them just boxing it you know and it's like what like come on man yeah that you know, that but, was kind of awkward i mean he this these things move quick and he was just like dodging right right right, 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 like, right, what? right right so yeah so i mean so there's tons and tons and tons of inconsistencies in this movie but you know again it, you know it, it makes for a decent movie you yeah know, the, the other issue i notice is i mean they are using very short barreled rifles right and they have dual scopes on to dual optics they have something with a magnifier which they always have equipped mm -hmm. and off to the side they have a flip red dot sight which would probably be more effective for the type of scenarios they are one this is a short barrel rifle so you don't really need that distance with a magnifier so right, like exactly. i don't know why they're not using that red dot site which would open it up and give you more peripheral vision especially with these things moving so quickly around yeah. and they ha all have this red dot off to the side and it, none of them well, none of them are right, using it right and especially it all being urban warfare and they're indoors a lot doing this yeah you're not going to use a freaking zoomed in scope for this you know, right. you're going to so use a red like, dot site what's going on you know, i guess it right. just looks cool for right. the camera I don't <laughs> right know, yeah <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I mean, you know, again, a lot of unrealistic stuff, a lot of inconsistencies, but overall, the movie was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. there's another scene where they need a volcano expert in oh, yeah. this, in this. <laughs> right. and Chris Pratt's like, I know a guy. Right, yeah, I got a guy. <laughs> and there's like this kid that's obsessed with volcanoes in, in one of his classes, so they yeah. go to him to get his expertise on these volcanoes, Right. and I just thought that was completely ridiculous. I mean, they probably could have went to Google, and clearly we have experts that would know much more than, than what this, this high kid school would kid. Know. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, exactly. But it yeah. was just kind of an well, odd scene. But and they, and they made it comedic, right? Sam Richardson kind of has a funny little scene there with it, where they're talking about it and stuff. So, so I saw why they did it that way. But yeah, if you if you want volcanic ex, you know expertise, you're going to go to a, a geology expert, you know, or somebody who deals. And with they that. ask this kid a question, and he immediately like turns the laptop right. around, and it's got like right. graphics oh, oh, yeah, of right, all this right, stuff right, going right. on. Here's right. your answer right here. Right, and I'm yeah. like, what? Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, where did you, would you just make those in two seconds? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, well, huh, so, you yeah. just have to get the ready? <laughs> right. So, yeah, yeah, again, totally unrealistic, unrealistic stuff, but, you know, makes for a good movie, you know. And, uh, and and it did. Again, again, we were both pleasantly surprised. You know, I was glad I saw it. You know, would I watch it again? Probably. It, it's so long. Only though. because it's so long, though, maybe not. Exactly. You know, they, they totally shouldn't have had it to be two hours and 20 minutes. They should have cut it down to about an hour 45 and it would have been a much better movie than uh, than what it was. And the the future jumping is kind of cool with the concepts they yeah. used there, which which was nice to add to this. Yeah, that was cool. But uh, but overall, again, you know, we're pleasantly surprised. Uh, you know, if, if you know, rating this movie, I'm going to give it a seven. You know, I uh, and that's going into it thinking I was going to give it like a four or a five just based off watching the trailers and how not excited I was about this movie. But going into it with a low expectation, it definitely exceeded my expectations, especially later in the movie with J.K. Simmons. 
And, uh, you know, and, and I was pleasantly surprised. And, uh, you know, even with all the inconsistencies and all that, which a lot of people won't catch because they weren't in the military, you know, we just, we catch that stuff because we were, uh, you know, it was, it was a pretty decent movie. And, I, and, and what made it even better is it's free. You know, if you're an Amazon Prime you know, subscriber, then it's free to watch right now. And you can go on there and check it out. So, you know, I, I and I would if I were you. I'd definitely check the movie out. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I'm going to give this as a seven, a seven as well. The military stuff didn't detract too much from, from it for me. Um, but, yeah, it's a pretty good movie. I would put it on Battlefield LA in that level. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah, right about there. I, I, I would agree as well. Definitely not as good. It's as, definitely better than Infinite that we saw recently. Way better than Infinite. And Infinite, we went in with greater expectations, right. and it completely let us down. Like, that movie was just very, very disappointing. Where this was just the opposite. It went into a low expectations and came out very surprised. So, yeah. So if you got Amazon Prime, give it a go. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely check it out. But all right, guys, well, that's our review. We hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like our channel, hit like and subscribe, and we'll catch you at the next review. See you guys. Ready? What are you looking at me for? Oh, I'm trying to think of what I'm saying in the beginning. This guy must think I'm cute. He keeps looking at me. I'm trying to see what I'm going to say at the beginning here. So, we're... <laughs> You thought you could just swoop in there and do it good. Yeah, did, <laughs> You're like, I got this, I got this. Yeah. Throwing this over to me, no problem. Yeah. Guess that makes sense. I'm Josh. And I'm Billy. Welcome. And... What the hell? Yeah, go ahead, man. <laughs> Is tomorrow war worth watching today? Boom. There you go. You did it. Congrats.